And on my left, the sweetest thing you can find in a refrigerator, Miss Betty Friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and on my left, author, publisher, columnist, and dear man, Bennett Sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Well, when I walked into the theater tonight, for a minute I thought I was in the wrong theater. But uh, I'm glad to see a standby along with these two attractive guests. Uh, Dorothy Gilgallon practically isn't here either. She's up in the cloud somewhere because Ernest Hemingway said she was one of the great reporters of the country. And that's praise from Caesar. <laughs> well, we also have on our left our old standby, who makes the panel seem right, Buncey's father, John Charles Daly. <laughs> My daughter, Buncey, has a new favorite man, and his name is Bennett Sir. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Uh, we have two uh, good friends with us tonight on the panel, and it gives us a chance not only to test Bennett and Dorothy, but let's see what Sam and Betty Furness can do with some very interesting occupations and some very nice guests. We'll have a famous guest challenger a bit later on, but now I think it's time for our panel of experts to meet the first challenger whose job has to be spotted. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Pearl, Pearl Snell, is that right? Uh, is it Miss Snell? Miss Snell. Miss Snell, and where are you from, Miss Snell? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, that's where you live now, huh? That's right. Well, that's a nice country to be at this time of the year, yes, but glad you came up to uh, do the holiday season in New York. Uh, four people sitting over there, they look kind of uh, rough, you know, but uh, take heart. <laughs> Basically, they're pretty good Joes, and they would like to uh, get a better look at you. So will you take a hike down there for me? What's made the weather so cold down there this year, Miss Snell? Hello, Miss Snell. Well, you must have sent up north. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Snell, over here now, if you will, and sit down next to me. And as you may know, the panel, having had a chance to meet you briefly, to see your handwriting and hear your voice, we give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's an underwater swimmer. An underwater swimmer, Mr. Levinson. I think she's the vice president of a piggy bank. Miss <laughs> Verdad. I think she's a nurse in a shirt hospital. <laughs> Mr. Sir. I think she runs a motel down in Fort Lauderdale. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Miss Pearl Snell. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <clears throat> Miss Snell, you know how we score this operation? Every time you can give them a big fat no, I'll flip a card. Ten flips and you're in. All, All set? All set. Okay, Miss Snell is salaried. With that, we will begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Miss Snell, do you do your uh, work in Florida? Yes. Around Fort Lauderdale? Yes. Uh, is there a product connected with what you do? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then you deal in services? In services? You deal in services? Yes. Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, do you work out of doors at all? Yes. Do you wear anything that's different Let me from have a small conference. All right. Let's carry on. She does I work learn something every day. She works out of doors at all. Yes, she does work out of doors at all. You also work indoors then, I gather from the conference. Yes. Uh, do you wear anything that is different from an ordinary dress? Is yes. there something distinctive about it? Yes, it could be. I mean, it's, it's different from ordinary streetwear, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, could it be called in any sense a uniform? Could it be called a uniform? Mm -hmm. mm, no, I don't know. No. Could it be called a uniform? Two down and eight to go, Mr. Levinson. Uh, do people come to you for this service? Yes. Yeah. They'd, yes, they'd come to engage the service, you know, that's all. They would come to engage her service. Do you deal with both men and women? Yes. Uh, do you uh, deal more with one than the other? <laughs> no. You don't? Uh, 
I would have to, I, I would say I think um, in balance probably it would be about equal, although it, there might be an imbalance for a period of time you would get back into. <laughs> yeah, three down and seven <laughs> <years>. <laughs> Uh, does your work have anything to do with uh, educating people? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Now, Fort Lauderdale is a great vacation resort. Uh, do you deal with the vacationers who come down there in any way? Sometimes. It's also on the water. Does your work get you anywhere near the Atlantic Ocean? Sometimes. <laughs> but the suit that you, the costume that you wear, am I correct then in saying that it is not a bathing suit or something that is used for going into the water? Yes, it's, yes. A, yes, it's yes. not a bathing it's suit. It's not a no. bathing suit. Mm. Well, do you have anything to do with any creatures who uh, come from the deep? In the shape of fish or alligators. Or Is that the darndest thing? Man, no. How did you ever get that no. idea? That's wrong. <laughs> That's fine. Five down, five to go, Mr. Gilgallop. Well, Miss Snell, the people who come to you, do you do anything to them physically? Do you touch them? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Levinson. Uh, do you make people happier in any way doing this? Well, you like to think so, don't yes, you? Yes, I like to think uh -huh. so. Uh, do you do this, whatever you're doing, standing up? Yes. Uh -huh. the, uh, there's the other party. Is there another person involved in this when you do it? No. No. no you do it all by yourself. Yeah, she does it all by herself. There could be other people around, but what she does, she does by herself. Nice Seven down to living. <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Miss Burnett. Do you entertain in any fashion? Entertain in any fashion. That makes it eight down and two to go. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Snell, you, you wouldn't have anything to do with selling tickets to anything or uh, having anything to do with taking care of people who come to see an orange farm or a horse race or something like that? No. <laughs> Nine down and one to go, Miss Gilgallis. Miss Snell, do you use your voice in your work? You mean to, as a specific working part of the, of the work? Hmm? Just as she ever talks. <laughs> no, Dorothy, I don't want to, we don't want to mislead. You mean as a part I of the I know you don't, John. A big part, yeah. <laughs> now, no more to go. And this is going to hurt because actually what we did was to pull a ringer on you. This is an occupation. It's going to, you know, you could have plucked it out of the air. But it's unlikely that uh, perhaps you'd think Miss Snell does it. She's a plasterer. <laughs> We thought, my heaven, we never heard of it. She's the only woman plasterer in the North American continent with a union card, and she's plastering now for the key plastering company oh. down in Florida for the Mackley Mackle Construction, Construction. Mackle Construction Company. Oh. See that? We got all the details. I saw a lot of ladies plastering the yeah. other night. Well! <laughs> well, I must say that you tied the panel in nuts. We hope you had fun. It was great Thanks. having you on What's My Line. Good night, man. Second challenger, would you come in and sign in, please, sir? Daniel. Daniel Drago, is that right, sir? Yes, sir. Where are you from, Mr. Drago? Chicago. Chicago? Yes, sir. Illinois. Yes, sir. Is there another one? Not that I know of. Boy, this is going to get you a lot of letters. I know there must be another six. Every time I try this, I find out there are at least a dozen. Of every, every town in the country has a dozen other towns with the same name. The panel over there, sir, would be benefited if they had a closer look at you. And uh, if you feel up to it, would you go over and let them have that closer look, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Good evening. Hi, Mr. Hello, Mr. Drago. All right, Mr. Drago, over here, if you will, sit down next to me, and uh, the panel will get that one free guess that it's got coming to it. And we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he manufactures bathtubs. Manufactures bathtubs, Mr. Levinson. I think he's a talent scout for a reform school. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Burnett. I think he owns a toll bridge. Mr. Sir. I think he makes garages wide enough for those 1955 cars to squeeze into. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Dragle. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> right. Mr. 
Dragle, are you familiar with our scoring system? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Dragle mm -hmm. is salaried. With that, we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Dragle, do you deal with both men and women? Yes. Does what you do make people happier? <laughs> sometimes. <clears throat> Does it sometimes not make them happier? Yes. Are there some people who wouldn't be very glad to see you arrive on the premises? Yes. Uh, do you deal with adults rather than children? Yes. By any chance, do you work for a non-profit making organization? Yes. I hate to say this word, but do you have anything to do with taxes? Taxes? Yes. No, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> One down and nine to go, Mr. Levinson. Uh, could I come to you for your service? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you got through with me, would I be in a different condition? No. No, actually, um, Sam, he wouldn't change your condition. We'd have to give you a no on that. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Burnett. <laughs> Do you go to people in your work? Yes. Uh, conference. Yes. Okay. Proceed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, do you wear a uniform? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Dragon, you said you worked for a nonprofit making organization. Uh, do you work for some kind of a government? Yes. Is it a city government? Yes. Is it the city of Chicago? Yes. Uh, do you do most of your work indoors? Yes. Has it anything whatever to do with the law enforcement division yes, of it Chicago? Has. It has? Yes, sir. Uh, would you be a familiar figure around one of the courts in Chicago? Fairly so. But is it is correct to say that you're not there all the time? Yes. Well, do you do have, have anything to do with the uh, conducting of any of the cases that take place in this court? In a way. But you are not one of the attorneys or a presiding officer at, this, at these trials. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, do you ever uh, have anything to do with putting up bail or anything like that for any people who come into the court? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Jagger, you say you go to people and you go about in your work. Occasionally. Oh, just occasionally? Yes. Uh, is it fair to say that you are not an inspector of any kind? A city yes. inspector? You are something else? Uh, this is with the specific application of inspector, with yes. charged with duties of inspection. Mm -hmm. Have we established whether Mr. Drago wears a uniform in his work? He does not wear a uniform. It is has that been correct? established that he does not wear a uniform while he is. Uh, when you are not in court, are you in an office? Yes. Uh, do you have anything to do with children ever? No. No, not in his work. Five down and five to go, Mr. Levinson. Uh, do you have anything to do with summonsing people to get them to court? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Burnett. Can people come to you for advice? Hardly. I'd say no to that question. Wait, we'll have a small conference. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Dragle is willing to stretch a point. Actually, I don't <clears throat> think we could say that they come for advice, but they might get something that could be beneficially <clears throat> called advice as a result of his labors. Is your work disciplinary? No. I don't think he's ever arrested anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, if Mr. Drago will permit, I would say that there is, in a sense, a disciplinary function, although he may not have to exercise it directly himself. Would you buy that? Yes, I'll take that. All right, Mr. Burnett, continue. Thank you. That confused me utterly. That's what we were hoping. <laughs> <over. laughs> Uh, do you uh, observe people? Yes. Uh, is that the nature of your job, observing people? No. 
No, I'm going to give you one more minute to get this because I don't think you're getting close to it. Seven well, down and three to go, Mr. Mr. Sir. Drago, would people be more apt to see you if they're convicted than if they're acquitted? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, are you an investigating officer of any kind? No. No, not as such, Dorothy. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Levinson. Do you participate in court trials at all as your presence required? Then? Yes. Uh, do you have a police capacity within the courtroom? Yes. Ooh. Police capacity within the courtroom. Do we have a conference? Room. You may have maybe ten seconds. Maybe he's something like a fingerprint or ballistics expert. A laboratory. You ask Maybe him. he is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he reads the, says court. He yes, yes. He, he, uh, quick, quick. Does he help to bring sort of, uh, read the, bring the court to order? Is, is he a court attendant of some kind? Ah, there you go, Sam. That makes it ten down. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, this is a tough one. We thought that perhaps oh you goodness. might just lean in this direction after the uh, holiday mm -hmm. season. Actually, Sergeant Drago tests auto drivers for intoxication for the Chicago Ooh. Police Department. That's the only thing. <laughs> and goes to court as a witness, needless to say. Thank you very much, Sergeant. It was nice to have you with us. Thank you, Mr. Daly, and my thanks to Commissioner O'Connor. Commissioner of Police of Chicago for the privilege of appearing before What's My Line. Well, our thanks to Commissioner O'Connor for letting you come and be with us. Nice to have you with us. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, in just a minute, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest. But first, here is a new dance pantomime by Dorothy Jarnack for Stop It. When it comes to a deodorant, some people are still in the dark. Maybe it's time we threw a little light on the subject. You want a deodorant to make you mighty like a rose. But if you think that's enough, you are very, very mistaken. So why don't you get next to Stop It? Stop It protects those pretties next to you. That devastating dress. That altogether bewitching lingerie. You see, Stop It is an antiperspirant, too, and here's how it works. It closes down your pores like so many tiny, tiny little windows. But Stop It doesn't stop there. Stop It is gentle as a spring day. When you pick Stop It, you're picking a lotion spray with soothing, soothing ingredients. It's wonderful. Poof! There goes perspiration. Shouldn't you get Stop It? That was Dorothy Jarnack. Isn't she wonderful? And now, I have some wonderful news. Because we are so sure you'll find Stop It everything you want in a deodorant, we're offering you this 47-day trial bottle free. When you buy the regular size bottle of Stop It at the regular price, you'll get this generous trial bottle with it, an extra 47-day supply. It's your opportunity to see for yourself why so many millions of women and men insist on Stop It, America's most popular spray deodorant. So get Stop It now and get your 47-day trial bottle free. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. And for this particular part of the program, the panel has blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? of our mystery challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with um, Sam Levinson. Well, everybody knows you. That's nice. <clears throat> I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll start with the broad area of entertainment. Are you in the entertainment industry? That means, yes, Sam. I just thought somebody stepped on your corn, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you are in the entertainment industry. That means yes. <laughs> my goodness. I hope this is human. <laughs> Sam, maybe it's Lena Horn. It may be. <laughs> uh, 
I'll just guess that you sound more like a woman than a man from that sound. Are you a woman? <laughs> my goodness, Worst my wife Clarence never Janus sounds I like that. Are you, in the, are you uh, connected with uh, television, ma'am? That means yes? Yep, that's yep. Ah, I heard it. <laughs> you are connected with television. Do you have a program that bears your own name? One down and nine to go, Miss Furness. Does your television work come from the other coast? You will help me, John. That was a yes? That was a yes. <laughs> Are you on regularly on television? Do you appear on an evening show? Do you play a part as distinguished from appearing as yourself? <laughs> New Year's Eve again. <laughs> have, you, have you also worked in the motion picture business? <laughs> Are you still working in the motion picture business? At <laughs> two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Oh my God. Uh, would you be broadly defined as a comedian? <laughs> <laughs> the most expressive laryngitis I must say. Has the program that you star in been running for quite a long time? Are you a blonde on this program? <laughs> <laughs> Do you by any chance play the part of a secretary in a business establishment? Three dollars, seven to go. I thought you had it, Bennett. Ms. I did too. Could I have a conference with Bennett to find out who he meant? Would yeah, you, you can have 10 seconds for private a private secretary. Girl. Oh, oh, okay. Um, but you are a blonde. Have you ever appeared on the Broadway stage? Were you in a musical comedy? Uh, oh. Um, was it uh, before 1945? Are you Eve Arden? Eve Arden, uh, right! Where did you get that, Missy? Well, I'll tell you, John. Mm -hmm. I once appeared as a mystery guest on a program. I do have laryngitis, by the way. <clears throat> and uh, I disguised my voice elaborately and raised it two octaves and used an accent. And 65 people phoned in and said it was Eve Arden. <laughs> <laughs> and at that time, I didn't think 65 people knew me. So I knew I couldn't smart for <laughs> fool <laughs> these smart cookies. Well, I must say it's one of the most <clears throat> distinctive voices that uh, any part of this great world of entertainment has ever known. And I think also one of the most loved. What brings you to New York? Oh, thank you. Well, every year we have to put on our shoes and come to the big city. You know? <laughs> We're kind, of, kind of farmer folk now. Such lovely shoes, too. You're just having a vacation? Mm-hmm. Well, good. A vacation from four children for the moment. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's one. Actually, And this it's is... wonderful to get back and see what's going on in the Broadway theater. Well, I'm very glad that you... See us people. four children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very glad that you decided to come back and muchly pleased that having come back, you decided to come and visit with us. Thanks well, thank you, John. Grand it's a having pleasure. having you with us. Time, but let's see what you can do with a final challenge. Will you come in and sign in, please, very rapidly, sir, so we can give them a small chance to see if they can determine what you do. Earl Hallman, is it, sir? Yes, How do you do, Mr. Hallman? <laughs> Where are you from, sir? South Orange, New Jersey. You're from South Orange, New Jersey. Will you take a good look at the panel, because you're not going for a walk, and we're not going to have any wild guesses. You come on over here and sit down next to me. What we will do is let our viewers have one more quick look at you, and at the same time, we'll tell them what your line is. And you come in just a bit closer, but the panel's going to have to dig. <laughs> All right. Panel, uh, Mr. Holman is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Ms. Furness. You've got to have about a minute and a half, so we've got to go. You deal in services, Mr. Holman. Yes. Is there a product connected with your services? Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you work in an enclosure as store or office? 
Yes. Do people come to you? Yes. Do you come in physical contact with the people who come to you? Do you touch them? Yes, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Is this product small enough for me to lift with ease? No. <laughs> <laughs> One dollar and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Is, it, is this a product, Mr. Hallman, that might be bought in a store? Yes. Could it be bought in a general department store? Yes. Uh, but it's not easily lifted? No. Is there metal in it? Yes. Is it used to contain something? Yes. Would it be very, very heavy? Mm, yes, I'd say so. Is anything like a safe? A safe? Gee, we just ran out of time. That would have been no. Actually, we did this just for Betty. Guess what Mr. Holman does? Refrigerator. He sells refrigerators. <laughs> Betty, you can be sure that it's Westinghouse. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Holman, oh, thanks an awful lot for being with us. Sorry, we couldn't get more time, but we tied it in knot. Nice to have you. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in just a moment. But first, here is Arlene Gray for Stop It. This is the special value package of Stop It spray deodorant you'll be seeing on drug and cosmetic counters everywhere. It means that when you buy a regular size bottle of Stop It at the regular price, you'll get this generous 47-day trial bottle with it free. It's our way of making still more friends for Stop It, and it's a delightful bonus for regular users. Gives you a handy extra bottle for travel, for your dressing table, or for others in your family. This offer is limited, so get Stop It right away and get your 47-day trial bottle absolutely free. And now, before our panel says good night, may I remind you to tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when once again we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. Mr. Levinson and Miss Betty, thank you for your good offices. Yes. Miss Arlene will be away again next week, but we're going to have Fred Allen and Janet Lee here to fight the good fight. And now, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Doris. Good night, Sam. Nice to have you aboard. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Betty. Good night. Good night, Dennis. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Goodbye, Arlene. Good night, John. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope Arlene's having lots of fun. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production, produced in association with the CBS Television Network.